Holy God, our Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us life. Thank you for giving us this chance to stand in front of you and to listen to your words. We people do not have enough of understanding and wisdom to understand all your will, all your purposes, but we believe that every time you call us to come in front of you is to let us know what is the next step we should do in our life, what is the, the best way to lead our life towards you. Please be with us at this time. Help everyone to understand why we're here, what we're supposed to do, what we're supposed to try hard for. Please open our hearts and minds to understand your message, the message of your holy words of the scripture of the Bible. Be with us and help us in everything. We pray in the name of our Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let us start with the scripture, with the Bible. Let's open the Bible. Second uh, Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. New Testament, Second Corinthians chapter 2, uh, chapter 13. Second, Second Corinthians chapter 13. Verse 5. I'll read it for you. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Prove yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you are disqualified? Well, starting this Bible seminar, which is, which is supposed to last uh, about seven days or six days, uh, I want to start with this verse because it addresses quite different type of people, including believers and non-believers altogether. And knowing that many of you are coming from Christian backgrounds, at least some of your parents were Christians, or even not having Christian parents living in this rapidly changing world, you cannot but be influenced by many Christian messages around you through the television, through radio, through newspapers, magazines, and so on and so forth. So many of us being bombarded by these amounts of information may get quite con confused or just get quite dull reacting to all these messages because, well, every day listening to you have to believe in Jesus, you have to read the Bible, or you, you need to know God makes you quite dull to those messages if you don't understand the reason why you should do that. Sometimes some of us try to ask questions. Okay, so you want me to believe in Jesus, why should I do that? And even like tonight, many of you are invited by your friends, by your relatives, and you might ask them, so why I am supposed to go there? Why should I be here and listen to these messages? That is a very good question. And I hope that's why we're here to answer, to get the answer to this question. Why should people learn the Bible? Why should people really believe in God and Jesus Christ? To answer this question, you cannot just give one sentence answer. Surely it is possible, but hardly it will give you the right answer that will stay in your heart and that will really give you comfort. But at least I wanted to start with this message, with this verse, to let you get some kind of idea what we're going to do. So there are two words, and should I, shall I write it on the whiteboard so we could keep it in our minds during the seminar? What do we see? Two verbs saying one is examine and the other one, can you help me? What's the second one? Is to prove, right? Yes, let's examine and prove. So what are we going to examine? What are we going to prove? This verse explains, examine yourselves and examine whether you are in the faith. These two words, these two, two verbs are related to the word, to a noun which is faith, which is very much crucial when we speak about Christianity, when we speak about the Bible, or when we speak about God. Because faith is the link which can connect the visible people who live in the world with the invisible God, who exists, who really exists, who is living at this moment, who is living eternally. How can we see him? How can we understand him? Surely we can use a lot of scientific methods to understand the Bible, 
they would lead us close to God, but they won't show us God incomplete. So one element will be lacking in your research, that is faith. Without faith, it is not possible, it is not possible to please Him. Would you like to check this verse also in the Bible? It's in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Let's read it together. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So now we have another idea, another, let's say, impulse or another motivation what, why we should spend some time devoting to studying the Bible and trying to see whether these words, whether these messages are really true, whether they really have connection, relation to each of us. Actually, after studying the Bible properly, you'll realize that this relation is not a general and narrow relation with all people in this world, but it has a very strong impact even on your personal life. And it is really even much more specifically related to each of you. So the motivation to keep studying the Bible is, without faith it is impossible to please Him. And we must to believe in Him in order to what? In order to have the reward. But God promises that He would give that reward even without us really trying that much to do it. You probably heard the famous message of Jesus Christ Himself when He addresses all type of people in this world. What is his message? It's in Matthew chapter 11. Yeah, tonight, starting tonight, you'll have a lot of job to do with your fingers. Probably not with your mouths, because we will discuss the things after this, the, the sermon, as it was announced. During the day, probably you have a lot of discussion with different people. You hear many people talking. Yes, your ears won't rest. And I believe your heart and your mind won't rest, right? But especially busy things will be your fingers. So please, tonight, work with them. Yes, we'll work on the Bible. And let's open Matthew 11. Matthew chapter 11. The last part of this chapter, verses 28 to 30. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. I'll read it for you. Imagine that it's not me telling this to you, but Jesus Christ himself when he was on the earth. Imagine him shouting to people, inviting them to himself. He said, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavily, heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Many of you present here are natives of this country, which is called Korea, which is supposed to be the, one of the examples of politeness and respect to each other. You have a lot of traditional you know, forms of etiquette. But they say Japanese people are especially proficient in that. It does mean that in heart they have all that. I mean, probably some of you are Japanese, so excuse me for that. So you must end. They have a very strict rules of how to address each other in different life situations. So when you start learning one of the Eastern languages like J Japanese or Korean, it's not so much of the language, but all these structures. How to welcome a person, how to, to say hello. Well, we do th those in 